Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John Suspidia True and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2, where last time, Callistos the Great passed on, tragically. A great man indeed, who protected the Byzantine Empire from the forces of Catholic Europe and grew our empire more than any leader who came before him. But, um, I think we're all willing to admit his later years were not his most glorious, beset as they were by ill health an ill-fated attempt to spread Hellenism to the Empire, and bees. Like, so many damn bees. And thus we find ourselves in a bit of an opposition where I'm not playing as any of Callistos' sons, because my primary title was the Imperial Throne, and that went instead to Callistos' half-brother, though in all fairness, he's got a damn good pedigree. Alright, brother of the last Emperor, and of course son, of the Emperor before. So Joseph has a plenty good enough claim to be the next Emperor. That's all absolutely fine. But the changing of the guard is of course an excellent time to just get, you know, caught up on what's going on in the Empire, around the rest of the world, in the dynasty. So let's make sure we know where we are here. So once upon a time we had High Chief Leon and he actually had himself a whole bunch of children but some of them died in tragic Tragic accidents in which I murdered them. Then, yeah, there was the line of Margarita. That actually has ended and left the dynasty. Then we had ourselves, yeah, a bit of a line through Aeroneos. But that has all come to nothing as well. So the only line that's actually continued is the line of Payrun himself. Now, of course, the main line at that point descended down to Hector. But there were other branches as well. Paulina had three children, but they all moved over to House Macedon and have since left the dynasty entirely. Achilles, of course, died, tragically, at age 15. Then we had ourselves, yeah, a couple of dead ends over here. Orestes and Zoe, both of them ended up with dead ends. But we do have a couple of surviving dynasty members over here. So Hector's sister Anna, who is therefore Joseph's aunt, she had a son, the Blessed Peyron. He himself had two children. One daughter didn't end up going anywhere. But then we had ourselves a Count, who was the son of Lucifer, but we'll politely overlook that. He had himself a bunch of children. And then we got ourselves, yes, someone who we named after himself rather egotistically. And then, wow, three generations in a row with the exact same name. But you are still alive. And you're in the court of... You're in the court of Good Dog. No, you're in the next door territory to Good Dog. So you're just chilling out. Yes, there we go. You're chilling out over here in this court. Absolutely fine. Honestly, you're kind of terrible, but what can you do, eh? Oh, yeah, apparently there was a bit of inbreeding going on on that side. So, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's not great at all. And also, on top of that, he's Croatian and Catholic. So... A lot of stuff's gone wrong. Moving swiftly on, let's never speak of him again. We have got ourselves Mutimir. That's a good name. Okay, that's pretty darn fun. Once again, same court. So this entire family is just hanging out in that region of Croatia. He is Catholic again. Stats are unspectacular, if sort of okay, I guess. So if we're lucky, maybe he'll produce some children over time. There is a child here. Ivanis, and he's unfortunately ugly, which is a bit of a shame. Seven years old, so we don't really know much about him. Then another child over here as well. Okay, so we've got a couple of male children over there. Keep an eye on that branch of the family. Potentially, it might actually produce a few more heirs yet. Though, honestly, there's nothing too exciting going on over there. So all of that is basically dead. It didn't go anywhere. However, Hector's line, yes indeed. There were a lot of children here. Mainly, yes, this was the generation where we had 17 daughters. The problem with daughters, of course, is yes, by default, they just produce people for other people's dynasties. So a lot of this is just a big old pile of dead ends that don't really go anywhere. Though I will say, of course, what I'd forgotten was, and this is why this is an important thing to do on occasion, why we got married matrilineally. So she had a son who is actually currently... Okay, I didn't realise this was a thing, but actually the Duke of Cilicia, hang on, was this... Ah, was your father... Yes, I did set this up. 
your father was Duke Franjo. I liked Franjo. He was great before somebody put out his eyes and then he was burnt to death. So, uh, yeah, we do actually have ourselves a member of our dynasty ruling over Silesia right now and producing children of his dynasty too. So we've actually got ourselves a fair few male dynasty members floating around in Silesia, worth maybe keeping an eye on there. Good, so that worked out at least. And Princess Nope was also married off matrilineally, so yeah, eventually after producing one bastard, she is producing children of our dynasty, so we've got ourselves a kid here who is actually Hellenic. Very, very nice indeed. Excellent, in fact. Though he's... Oh, he's Ares. Good. Good, good, good. That's just a zodiac sign. That's a okay. So, this is all very, very positive indeed. Nope is actually producing children of the correct religion. Well done. And then we have got Carlo, who will despise me forever, who is actually the current, yes, king consort of Sicily. So hopefully he gets out a few children over there. Absolutely lovely. Then we have got Prince Giordano, who is very, very sneaky indeed, but once again sort of despises me. We might want to try and marry him off somewhere, just to basically get him out of the court. Prince Zeus, who tragically turned out to be garbage. Like, how is someone who is quick and born in the purple this damn bad? It's just embarrassing. And finally, of course, Poseidon, together with, yeah, a few female members I could get betrothed uh, matrilineally. Then, of course, we move over to Emperor Joseph himself. I've already got a son, and my son himself already has... Uh, two children. Though you are... What the hell are you doing over there? Where the hell are you right now? Who's that? Okay, why do members of my dynasty just bloody end up in a Malfi? This is not the first time this has happened. And the daughter's somewhere else as well. She's over with... Okay, she's in Greece. That's fine, but again, I'm not sure how it actually happened. Ah, I see how it happened because I was marrying into families. Got it. So yes, indeed, this is the Duchess of Crete that we married my son into, or rather, Joseph's son. He wasn't my son at the time when I arranged the marriage. So as a result of that, yes, his children are just ending up in various Greek courts. Now, I'm not sure how this one ended up over in Amalfi, but whatever. But uh, yeah, we've got ourselves one daughter over there. And if we're very, very lucky indeed, hang on, this is presumably going to be passed down to... Uh, Johannes, right? Or Johan... Sorry, uh, Johannikos. Uh, so yes, you, one day of my dynasty, will be the Duke of Crete. So, uh, at the bare minimum, even if everything went a bit wrong with, you know, Zeus last time, at the bare minimum, I have done a vaguely competent job spreading my dynasty all over the shop. In a generation or two, my dynasty is going to be controlling a lot of the Byzantine Empire. In fact, also, yeah, don't forget that I myself am married over to Anastasia over here. So, yeah, the children of Joseph might well be inheriting all of this too. Absolutely lovely. Though, ah, she might not be around for too much longer. That's a bit of a shame. Okay, let's look at Emperor Joseph himself and figure out what's actually going on here. I've started off with, no, don't kill Carlo. Admittedly, he's probably going to kill us, but still, don't. Not just yet, anyway. Choose an ambition, what have we got? Make a friend, see the realm prosper. Build a war chest. Getting those 10% plus taxes, that's never a bad thing. And that reminds me, by the way, now we've got a new leader, we can welcome the Jews back into the Empire. Because, to be honest, we only kicked them out because we needed to confiscate all their money to actually win the Crusade. I'm really sorry about that. It's going to cost me some money, but we're going to save up for that. It's going to be great. And while I'm on the screen, get me a doctor. Apparently the last one went missing, and that's probably a good thing, because the last one did pretty much just assassinate Callistos. So, Josef is a pretty competent all-rounder, all things considered. He's no expert in anything, maybe learning. Learning is uh, sort of okay. He's not desperately sneaky, but he's competent all-round. It'll do. Currently suffering from the flu, though that doesn't seem as severe as some illnesses, and he has had some successful treatment. So uh, hopefully he should recover from that no problem whatsoever. He's 45, which is not young, but not old either. Big Eater health is up. He's in a tiny bit of dueling. 
left-handed, which is actually good for personal combat skills. So when he gets over the flu, he's not going to be a terrible duelist if that's what we decide to do. He was legitimized bastard. No one seems to hold that against him. Brawny, that is good for health as well. Okay, so he's a healthy lad. That's positive. The chance of him producing children is going to be low just because he doesn't really swing that way. But he did get out, uh, yeah, potentially a heck to the second. So that'll do for the time being. Sympathetic towards paganism, obviously. Scarred, that is always nice as well. Has overindulged a little bit, which is going to hurt his personal combat skill. Bit of a shame. Erudite, that's great. Church opinion being high, never flipping hurts. Chaste is, oh dear. Yeah, he's going to be really bad at producing children. Ambitious is obviously great. Cynical is fine, if not spectacular. Patient is really, really damn good. That's really nice. And he's suffering from flu, but he'll get over that soon. Okay. Competent, if not exactly spectacular. He'll do for the time being. Also has, yeah, not much money at the time being. Prestige, not great for now. Piety is definitely a bit on the low side, but then he was just involved in that. Yes, sadly failed attempt to uh, reintroduce Hellenism, so I'm guessing that's to be expected. Okay, not bad at all. How's my wife, by the way? Ah, yes, we established. Dying. Um, so that's probably good, actually. We might be able to offset his very low fertility by getting in a new extremely lusty wife. Okay, next up, line up the vassals. So... We have got ourselves, yeah, the King of Bulgaria. He is happy because he is on the council already. We got the Queen of Sicily. She's not desperately happy, but she doesn't actually expect to be on the council. So that's absolutely fine. We have got the Despot of Greece, who's going to be a bit grumpy for the time being. You would make a... You'd make a competent enough marshal, if not spectacular. Fair enough, I suppose. Then the Queen of Anatolia doesn't want to be on the council. And yeah, Epirus is looking a bit, um, divided for the time being. So we're not sure who's going to be winning that there war. So I guess we'll just leave that be for now. Also, here's fun. Into the power vacuum of Epirus sort of exploding, the Duke of Pannonia has decided he's a big deal again. I mean, honestly, he's a competent all-rounder. I see no reason why we shouldn't have him on the council railing. Okay, you, Chappie in Bulgaria, you are currently the Marshal, which is not what you're best suited for. We've also got ourselves... Ah, uh, uh, yes, you. You're a malcontent, and on top of that, you're not actually powerful anymore. So, you can just go, because I'm not sure whether you're actually going to win the Civil War in Epirus. It should take a while anyway, so you can just naff off for the time being. Lovely. Right, new despot of Greece, you get into an advisor position, and then we're going to shuffle you straight round to being Marshal. Except, hang on, should I actually do that? Marshals are arguably one of the most important jobs going, because Marshals straight up train your troops. Hmm, maybe I should have, yeah, a random nobody doing that job, but, you know, doing it well. I mean, Nicola of Pannonia is literally the most qualified person we've got in the Empire to handle being steward. So you can have that job. That's fine. How good would you be at collecting taxes? You might be attacked. Honestly, I kind of don't care then again. Hmm. He's positive for now, but that's partly going to wear off because, yeah, he liked my predecessor and I honoured the good ruler. Okay. Ah, he's content. No, I want you to stay alive. So, then again, 3% chance of being attacked. Yeah, you know what? I can do with the money. Get over here and just collect some special tithes if you can. So, yeah, rather surprisingly, perhaps because, yeah, we've got the Epirus Revolt right now, and we happen to have two queens as well, that's everyone we actually need to put on the council, including the fact this guy's some random nobody. So, in which case, I do still have... An advisor role. So, okay. This is all very, very good indeed. You can move over to advisor because you're not really spectacular, to be honest. So, for once, we can actually have, you know, a really good council. Who is the most qualified person in the world to be my marshal? Ragnar. But Ragnar sort of uh, hates me. Why does Ragnar hate me? Well, I think my predecessor did throw him into jail at some point. Ah. It's partly because he hated my predecessor, short reign. Honestly, he kind of doesn't hate me that much, really. 
yeah, you know what? Go for it. I'm happy for you to actually move into an advisor position. Then we'll just swap you round. One malcontent is not the worst thing in the world. And you just get on with training some troops over there, lovely. And you're still getting on with your job over here in Alexandria. Marvellous. Okay, so now, now I can just have whoever I want for Mysticos. So, ah, of course, Giordano, who is actually incredibly flipping clever. Why does he hate me so much? Ah, because I honoured a ruler that he despised. That will wear off in a few years, but for the time being, no, it's too dangerous to have a spy master who absolutely despises me. I tell you what, having the Rector of Ragusa on side would not be a bad thing at all. He's pretty bloody qualified to do this job, and if he loves me, he'll pay more taxes or all the rest of it. That's probably for the best. And sadly, while I do actually have some Hellenic people in my court right now, it would appear I'm not allowed to assign them to be the role of my court priest, because I'm guessing technically the court priest does have to be the same religion that you publicly are. But I know that can't always be true, because at one point I accidentally had Daniel, who was a Tengri pagan, as my court priest. So, I'm not sure what the rules are there, but for the time being, we'll have you as the local pope being this guy. Because then at the bare minimum, if I need one, I can get myself a divorce nice and easy. Okay, so, so far, they don't seem to be hating me, that's nice. In fact, that there is a delightfully pragmatic council. Good, 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 good. Okay, council looking good. Let's make sure we understand who's where and what the situation is with all of them. Okay, Queen of Trebizond, obviously formerly the Queen of Sicily, I'll probably be referred to her as the Queen of Sicily anyway, but yeah, now Trebizond is her primary title. So, why are you grumpy at me for the time being? Wants control of Armeniacon. Okay, that's, that's over here. So, I can see in terms of, yeah, De Ure Kingdoms, uh, you're right, you really ought to control that. So I'm guessing this Duke... Right, this duke reports directly into me. Okay, well, I'll just transfer the vassalage. That strikes me as eminently fair. So that's worth plus 10 as well, of course, as the actual remover of the minus 25. So once that happens, you should cheer up. Yep, there we go, up to plus 9. So hopefully she won't try and murder me anymore. Now, I'm not going to deny, I wouldn't mind this being broken up a bit. She's a little bit too strong right now. So maybe if she comes around a bit further... As time goes by, I might try and enforce gavel kind on her if she ends up with multiple children. Because right now she's not got any at all, but I'm pretty sure she only just got married to Carlo. So if she has multiple children, we might well try and force her into gavel kind to get, yeah, a separate King of Sicily versus King of Trebizond, both of which will be of my dynasty. Over in Greece, yes, the young king who took over after, unfortunately, his dad was locked away, which is a shame because I liked his dad. He's pretty good, all things considered. Sympathetic to pagans. Great. Diligent. Fantastic. Deceitful and paranoid. Not so good, to be honest, given his intrigue's not great. Depressed and stressed, though. Might not necessarily be around for too long, so... Okay. Who precisely is this who's going to inherit otherwise? Ah, that'll be his uncle then, because he is the brother of the former king who was Hellenic. So, okay, that's his uncle. And Epirus, as we know, is sort of exploding right now, where, yes, yeah, someone they picked up from over here, who's a little bit on the tribal side, is trying to take out the more established feudal wing that's also gone a bit Catholic. Yeah, there was a major Catholic plot that I didn't actually deal with, so now... A lot of the Empire is actually Catholic at the moment, which is not great. Speak of the devil, Duke Focas over here, who's reasonably, if not spectacularly powerful, also went Catholic. Now, he actually likes me, so... Oh, he's a proper true believer. Okay, he's gonna be difficult to win back over. I'm guessing if you flip as a result of coming out of a secret society... Yeah, obviously, even if you like your liege, you're not just going to change back. Otherwise, it would be too easy for liegers to just undo secret societies. Okay, so now we've just got a lot of Catholics everywhere. 
Who's the leader of Bulgaria, by the way? Another Catholic! Great! In many ways, we should have been suspicious when he got himself crowned by the Pope. And then we've got my territory over here, which is officially, of course, Orthodox, but actually the people on the ground are Hellenic because we did the groundwork there. Anatolia is... that's still Orthodox for the time being. Trebizond remains Orthodox because the Queen of Sicily is still Orthodox, but her husband is now Hellenic, so who knows how the children will turn out. Queen Phyllis also went Catholic and also sort of despises me a lot. Ah, she's ambitious, she hated my predecessor, but I honoured him and made her come to the funeral. Fair enough, I suppose. Ah, uh, yes, and one more thing. I've got a barony over here from, yeah, these territories I've been setting up. Because if you build them, you get to rule them. But that's absolutely fine. Just create a vassal for you. Marvellous. So, the military's looking in good shape. The retinues that I started creating under Callistos are now almost flipping done. Which is great. So, give it a handful more months. We'll actually have... Uh, What's that, like six, seven, maybe seven and a half thousand men just standing there ready to go should be easily able to deal with any religious uprisings. And I'm guessing there's going to be a few of them because, oh dear, there's now, um, yeah, Hellenism, Catholicism and Orthodoxy all over the flipping place. So, I've got a plan, okay? The plan is we ain't giving up on Hellenism. It is going to be made to work, but this time I've got a better plan. We are not going to be gunning for the current generation of kings and queens, because as it turns out, yeah, they're just a little bit uh, resistant to that stuff. What we need to do is hit the next generation before they come of age. But I have an advantage that Callistos never did. Which is, now we've attempted to bring out Hellenism once and it sort of failed, there are at least a big number of Hellenic characters in the world. Meaning, I can actually assign Hellenic characters to positions of power when that happens to come up. So actually, in theory, a small rebellion would not actually be the worst thing in the world. If I could just take all of somebody's lands and titles off them, I could just hand those lands and titles over to someone who is part of the true faith all hail Zeus. That could work, though I'll need to do it carefully, because if everyone turns on me, I'm significantly outnumbered. Then again, because of various plotting, I've got a lot of stuff I could try and do here. I've got a lot of things I could do. I could just arrest someone, and if they escape, which they almost certainly will, well, at that point, I beat them in battle, I lock them away, I take their stuff off them. At that point, it belongs to me. And yeah, I can try and imprison you, because actually, you were trying to commit a crime. Then again, hang on, you're, you're one of very few people who actually is Hellenic, despite the fact you despise me. Probably because you consider me an infidel. Despite the fact I'm literally, secretly, never mind, I'm sure it's fine. Here we go, Pex. Now this would be a good test ground right here. He's got a bunch of non-aggression packs, but no alliances. He is a Catholic, which is bad. We want to be getting that out of the Empire. So uh, yeah, we know he's actually the head of a plot right now. No one's going to object to me trying to arrest him. And if I happen to fail, then we can just smash him down nice and easily. Well... This strikes me as potentially a good starting point right here. So, send that. He has now raised his flag in rebellion. Good! I consider this marvellously good news. Also, do we have to reassign all of the honorary titles? Not all of them, but it would appear there are a few more we can hand out. So, go on. We are, however, desperately lacking in commanders, so okay. We got ourselves a handful of good counts and whatnot floating around. In fact, did I just see... I did just see siege leader. I love siege leaders. Siege leaders are the best. Okay, here we go. Nice and easy. We've got these guys caught straight away. And something, something. Hang on, we've got ourselves... Uh, nope and an unknown father. Right, nope is still... Uh, Yep, playing away from home a bit. That's that's absolutely fine. 
That's a okay. And yes, would you believe I suspect I'm about to destroy the forces of Pax. You bastards doing whatever crime it was that you just did. I hope you're all very, very ashamed. And with all those siege leaders present, yeah, this will take absolutely no time at all to do. In fact, I could just speed it up a bit, to be honest. Then again, it's going to take me, like, one month to take their capital. Maybe we just accept waiting, given it is rather expensive to replace retinues, and there are retinues present. Also, who wants an education? Princess Xena, absolutely marvellous. She's showing a little bit of an aptitude towards management, so go on, duty's a safe bet. Okay, capital falls. I made myself a little bit of money doing that. There's 600 men here. Oh, 62%. <laughs> Fort level 0 0.8. Marvellous. Also, I've inherited the duchy of... Does anyone know what duchy that is? Here we go. Optimatoy over here. So you, I imagine, would like that. Duchy, you are welcome to it. Now, I am aware, of course, if I were to voice royalty, it's minus one for everybody, but it means next generation I can give it to his son, which I agree does sort of make sense, but this is such a minor thing, I'm just going to give it to him, it's fine. And you've just got to flipping love seeing, uh, yeah, 62% progress every 12 days. Absolutely marvellous. Stop trying to send me money. I am not accepting it. Also, you'll now be accepting surrender, you bastard. I can't believe you did whatever it was you did. Oh, and here's fun. Ragus is attacking Venice, which is uh, ballsy. To be perfectly honest, Venice is, uh, Venice is strong. Then again, republics are always stronger than they look. So you've got 7,000 odd troops. Venice has got itself... Oh. Okay. I don't know what happened to Venice, but they've lost everything at some point. So, Peter, Peter, Peter. The problem is, you're a traitor. So I'm going to be having the Duchy of Pex off you right now. You'll be handing that over. And also, you'll be handing over that county as well. Great, thanks. Now I need to give you a moment to remember what court you're part of. Okay, now you're technically part of the court of Ragusa. Because, yes, now the game has to assign you a court because you're not part of, like, your own court anymore. But now you're part of a court. No, I still can't banish you to get hold of your money because you're not actually in my court anymore, I guess. Weirdly, the head of Ragusa would actually pay 10 gold for his return, so probably best not to actually have that happen. Just toss him in the oubliette, let him die there. And now, I'm in possession of a duchy and a county that I don't really want or need. So, 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 so. Great news, guys. Who wants to be a count and also a duke? Oh my goodness, we've got Zeus just sitting right there, being Hellenic. Oh, this is perfect. This is absolutely perfect. And right next to him, we've got ourselves some Hellenic women floating around. Excellent, just excellent. So, how about we get him married up with Zenobia to make sure that's a good, proper, Zeus-loving household. And then we just send them off to rule over Pax. That's another duchy with my dynasty and the true religion on the throne. Ah, the reason Zenobia's in my court is because she's a priestess. Right, so that's the problem there, got it. Okay, maybe there's not as many Hellenic people to marry as I thought there were, by which I mean there's none. But, there is an even better opportunity here, which is uh, the young Duchess of Transylvania. In eight years, she'll be ready to marry up to Zeus, she'd be willing to do so. We start getting some children there. That's a big old chunk of Bulgaria falling into the hands of my dynasty. And potentially, depending on which way the children swing, Hellenism. Yep, I'm not surprised you'd prefer matrilineal, but what can you do, eh? Right, that's been agreed. And that means congratulations, you now get Pax. And there we go. We have got our first Hellenic Duke in place. And as time goes by, we do have a bunch of children of the Hellenic religion coming through. Love it. Where are you guys coming from, by the way? 
Ah, I'm guessing you're all the children of, uh, oh my goodness, Princess Nope. Right, you just keep popping them out, Nope. This could all be very useful. Especially as three of them are legitimate, as in part of my dynasty, they're not legitimate, they're bastards. But, they are of the dynasty. And we should really just get, uh, yeah, the Widow of Callistos hooked up to basically anybody else. Maybe if we're lucky, they might produce the odd child. And yes, obviously it matrilineal. Want them to be of my house if it does happen to happen. It's unlikely. She's getting on a bit. But, you know, we may as well. No, I can't. He's too low born. That's a shame. You know what? Let's tap in anyway. There's a chance there might be a child of the right religion at least. Also, fun fact, because the local area is Hellenic, there's nothing to stop me actually becoming Hellenic any time I want to. That's fun. Also, speaking of Nope, hilariously, she could actually go and marry the upcoming King of France. Which would be one a hell of a thing. I mean, she is producing good children right now, and she's making a good court tutor. That's the thing. She's a competent tutor. No. I'm going to keep her around, alright? We're going to keep her around. That's all absolutely fine. Maybe we'll find someone else to marry to the young king of France. How about Gregoria? Yep, you'd be up for that. That's absolutely fine. Non-aggression pact with France, maybe we'll keep them out of any nonsense when I attack Europe. Okay, back to the plot here, and uh, this might seem like a bit of a big one, but I can't help but notice... Yeah, actually... The King of Greece is also plotting against me. Leader of a plot, no one will object. I've got no chance whatsoever of imprisoning him, meaning he's basically going to declare war on me. And when he does, we can just destroy him. And that way, I could just hand Zeus all of Greece. We would actually have Greece in the hands of... Yes, yes, do it. Oh no, he's raised his flag in rebellion. Who'd have thought it? Now, that does also open up a spot on the council, so I would say uh, the Queen of Trebizond can go there, even though she doesn't need to, purely because uh, I would like her to basically really like me. Because what I need potentially to do is, you've actually not got any... Uh, no, that's your... is that your brother or something? That's your... okay, it's your ward for the time being, but... Uh, what I really need to do is, yeah, keep her on side. When she starts having children, I need to make sure she's willing to accept me as the guardian. And speak of the devil, the King of Bulgaria has a daughter, not a son. So, are you willing to potentially accept, say, a tutor? Yes. You're willing to accept Princess Nope as the tutor. And Princess Nope is doing a great job converting people to Hellenism. Get on with that, thank you. You see, we tried just subtly talking people round to accept the glory of Zeus, but they wouldn't listen. They just wouldn't listen. And Greece, you took a Hellenic king and let him die in your dungeons. And that means you are going to be flipping smashed. Okay, moving into position now and good. I have actually recovered well from the flu. Good, 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 because anything can kill you in Crusader Kings 2. And you have just decided to naff off to deal with Aquitaine. Well, good luck with that. And as for the forces of Greece, 9,000 men appear to be marching, I'm guessing, directly to Zeta. Okay, though they might want to come and... Oh, hang on. Oh, bloody hell. Okay, uh, so the ancient ones of the world are sort of collapsing. 50 gold or... Ooh. I could just sell them. Yes, we shall just sell that bit to tourists or something. Great. So, we've taken out this small force down over here. That's absolutely lovely. A little bit of a victory there. You're completely just going straight for Zeta. Honestly, I'm fine with that. It's a plane. So, if you want to trap yourself on the planes, you are welcome to do so. We're making some decent progress here. Not spectacular, but it'll do. And you can start work on this as well. In fact, you just ran straight into, oh my goodness, is it these guys again? Is that the same group that actually protected us against the Pope during the Crusade all those years ago? It's just those flipping pikemen standing on top of a mountain. I bet they're going to flip and win as well. I mean, if they don't win, they're going to do a really good job. <laughs> and who have we got here? 
That is yet another eunuch. Eunuchs are good. Bring a eunuch before me. Absolutely. We'll check him out later. But, oh my goodness, you're actually doing spectacularly. You've given up. The Greek army has just been defeated by a bunch of randoms on a mountain who just basically kill literally everything that ever goes in their direction. Oh, it's beautiful. I love you guys. You guys deserve medals. Ah, I'd actually forgotten I had actually promised Nicoletta, my niece, to, yes, Prince Peter, who at the time I thought was actually going to be, you know, next in line to the throne of Epirus. Unfortunately, since then, how's your revolt going, by the way? 7% against you. Uh, sorry about that. No, actually. Then again, could I just order him to, to stand down, the other guy? I mean, you kind of hate me, to be perfectly honest. Like, I'm not keen on you. You're Catholic and zealous. Which doesn't actually really work for me. No, 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 actually. I feel like, uh, if anything, we're just going to be breaking that betrothal. That's going to be minus 20, but no, I'm not marrying into a failing dynasty. If anything, you guys, hang on, where's, where's the revolt? You guys might be of interest. No, sorry, you're the revolt. The actual king is, uh, yeah, this guy who's... Okay, why are you not on the council? I feel like you should be. Well, it's not my fault. He's literally not showing up as an option. So I feel like he's brought that on himself. We'll see how that goes when he's actually ended the war one way or the other. Ooh, and here's fun. I think we actually tossed out the old finger of St. John, so now I can just buy a new one for 10 gold. Marvellous. So, the Shattered Forces of Greece are now going to try and please just march north again. Please, just literally go back to the exact place you just were. I would love you forever if that's what you decided to do. And we are winning sieges like nobody's business here. 46% every 12 days. Love it. Okay, you are taking on a small force of Epirus over there because they are good lads and loyal to me. And you, you are a traitor, you flipping monster. So you're marching. He's going to do it again. He's genuinely going to do it again. He's so desperate to get to Zeta. He's just going to try and cross this mountain. And nothing's going to cocking stop him. You lost once before. Oh my. Oh flipping my. A giant pile of pikemen on top of a mountain turn out to be the most devastatingly powerful force in the entire empire. I love it. Then again, you're actually not losing any troops right now, which is a concern. And by the way, there's some more Hellenic children. Oh, I'm loving this. This is great. Hellenic children all across the sky. Right, main force. Uh, probably just head down. Then again, hang on. You might be able to just get over here and catch these guys, depending on how long this fight goes on for. Because they seem to be... Yeah, they seem to be... Oh, hang on. Is there... Yep, there we go. Now they're losing. Okay, so we're just going to go and assist if need be. But I suspect... Actually, ooh. Oh, my goodness. Are they going to... No, no, they are going to lose. They are going to lose again. Okay, we don't need to. Just head straight down to their capital. We'll catch them as soon as they hit their capital, except... Oh, hang on. Are you actually going to... They actually managed to win. Okay, we're giving all of those pipe men medals. They did really well for themselves. Also, why are you going to Sicily, of all places? I don't know, but screw it. We'll just take down your territory over here. That's fine. I mean, it looks to me like Trebizond has forces standing right now. So presumably you're going to end up fighting them because they are loyal troops. Just like these troops were. And uh, that's just Prince Ogden. Nothing dramatic there. Yeah. So you're just going to be fighting your way past the forces of Trebizond. Who I assume are not trying to fight you. They're trying to do something else. And uh, okay, you're at war over there. Is this actually just due to, to raiding? Possibly this is just raiding. But honestly, if you're willing to just wear these guys down a bit, I'm not going to say no. And we have made it, meanwhile, to their capital. Reclaim the trade post. 
which we have taken there. So 21% because, yeah, we haven't actually had a proper battle yet because these guys have insisted on throwing their lives away against random other troops. Still, on the plus side, the capital of Corinth is going to go down in no time whatsoever. Once that's done, siege levels are, yeah, not high. Should be able to knock those out in no time at all. The flipping beautiful. There is a new leader of... Oh, hang on. The Republic of... What's the Republic of Lacuna? Okay, it's over in Sicily somewhere. That's fine. Okay, so the forces of Greece made the decision to come over here to... That's the same city that the Pope and the old Emperor had a fight over way back in the day. Okay, fair enough, I suppose. Also, what are you guys doing? Looks like there's a bit of trouble over in Bosnia. Bosnian de Jure war. Okay, I'm happy to just stay out of that one. Not a big deal. I would say we probably want to, yeah, seize the capital. If we're lucky, we might capture some family members... And then once we're done with that, just march the troops over here, smash the Greek force, and then we should be done. And the fun thing, of course, is right now I'm not technically expanding. I'm not threatening in the slightest. All I'm doing is redistributing the land I've already got. Okay, 16 gold for storming Corinth. Right there, any chance we just actually grabbed any people out of their hidey holes? Apparently not. That's a bit unlucky. Also, Queen Phyllis has just gone for a holy war against... Oh my, um... Are you sure about this, Phyllis? Because the last time I checked, the Jewish superstate of Antioch was actually pretty strong. Admittedly, plenty of their troops do seem to have gone missing, but... I'm still not sure about this one. I mean, she's got 7,000 troops. They've got about 7,000 troops too. So yeah, this one's gonna be down to the wire. And yeah, that's vassal business. I believe if she was involved in a crusade or jihad, I'd be allowed to offer to join her. But that's her business. All right, she's decided to do something stupid. So hopefully she can pull it off. Okay, slight problem with the whole Hellenic thing that I've been doing, which is Hellenic rebels have now risen up against me because I'm not Hellenic enough. Despite the fact I am myself secretly... Hellenic. Okay, I see how this is going to be a problem because they're going to be popping up literally inside my home territory. And they're not actually accursed infidels, but I can see why you'd want to say that out loud in public. Okay, so we need to go and take care of that nonsense, except hang on. I could just summon my vassals to take care of this. Okay, uh, guys, could you maybe, like, deal with this. Oh, there's like 5,000 of them. That's a lot. Okay, stand down. Stand down, stand down, stand down. That's on mountains as well. I'm gonna need to actually divert the army to go and take care of that nonsense. Oh, and here's some bad news. Well, kind of bad news. There's been a change in Bulgaria. New guy's just been installed by faction demand. Okay, so who are you actually married to? Queen of Bulgaria, a countess, currently in prison due to... Ooh, that's actually the fiancé of uh, my, what, my nephew. Uh, okay, that's that's fun. Uh, you want to be on the council. Honestly, fair enough, to be honest. You'd make a good spy master. Uh, advisor just opened up. To be honest, I'd rather have this guy, because this guy actually likes me. So yeah, you could be an advisor. That is no problem whatsoever. Welcome aboard. Right, take the last territory which has only 200 guys in it, and we have now completely taken their capital. Okay, what we need to do is... Ooh. Okay. Um, somebody's fighting the Hellenic army. It's the... It's the Slanos. Does anyone have any idea who the Slanos are? <laughs> I don't know who that is. But um, whoever it is, thanks... Uh, we'll just nip home, take care of that, while you just siege down Sparta. And then once that's done, we'll go over here and mop up the last of the Greek king. Because he's just, yeah, taking care of this nonsense for the time being. Also, slight issue we've got here for the time being. My son Hector is not being voted for to be the next emperor. And part of that is, oh, he is truly awful. You're not wrong. Okay. That's, that's a bit of a problem. Hmm. He is truly dreadful. I don't want to be playing as him, to be perfectly honest. But on the other hand, he's also the heir to everything. 
So if I were to die tomorrow, Hector would actually not be Emperor. And partly that's because they're voting for Burbat instead. Okay, well I guess that means Burbat's not going to be a commander anymore if that's what he's doing. Yes, there he is. He's not even that bloody good actually. You know what? No. So you've just been replaced. Goodbye. Also, that's nice. I won the Hellenic Uprising. Now, just out of interest, does that mean that this territory is... No, it is still Hellenic. Okay, so hang on. Let's actually use one of the map modes I never bloody use, which is... Where's Revolt Risk? Yeah, it's not perfect because of religious and culture. But then again, it's flourishing, which is good. So even with those Hellenic peoples there, it's not that bad. Okay, that means my main force can actually redirect over here. And in the meantime, what's going on with... Okay, Hector now gets the lot. Marvellous. So people are voting for him kind of by default, to be honest, but that's good enough for me. Also, I never picked a focus for my character. <laughs> oh my. Um, okay. Okay, okay, okay. What I should do is, hang on, can I actually... Any chance I could get rid of you right now? Yes, I can. So we're going to be getting rid of you immediately. Sieges are not going well. And also we have got ourselves a daughter, uh, Kira, who is going to be Hellenic. Lovely. That's absolutely fine. Just wait for the Pope to confirm I am now single again. There we go. I have now been... Wait, who was... Oh, that was my first wife who died in the dungeons of Callistos. Does anyone remember why I did that? Okay, perfect world. I need to get out some children in a flipping hurry. So let's just quickly search for lust. There we flipping go. So I'm going to need someone lusty, ideally of the right religion, and young to max out fertility. It's not a great selection, to be honest, though I'm now starting to wonder whether I can get away with... um. Yeah, passing off this woman's child as my own. Okay, the children would be German, which would go down badly with, you know, the electors. But she's, yeah, young and lusty. At least I've got a chance of getting out another son, which I do kind of need to do. It's kind of unfortunate that, yeah, plenty of people who are lustful in the world are also lesbians. So, you know, they do want to do it, just not with me. Okay, let's just go for somebody hyper-competent because I need the stats, because that's having a negative impact on my domain size. So, you, Maria, that is a non-aggression pact with the Baron of Tuscany. Great, that'll be fine. Gonna cost me some prestige, don't care. Absolutely marvellous. So get that done. Get married to you as fast as possible. Ideally, produce the odd child there. And I would like to... Oh, that's a lot of money. Yes. Boom. Done. Okay. So, I'm going to have myself a wife. We can probably get her a crown, to be honest. And at that point, I would like to go over to family. So, fertility up. Health up, which is good. I want to stay alive for at least a little while. And on top of that, yeah, I've got some more diplomacy, because that can get my diplomacy up to 14. 14 diplomacy is a good, solid number, because we're not just going to smash people into Hellenism. We're going to make this... Oh, bloody hell, what's going on now? Okay, so the guy who was literally only just set up by faction demand, Bulgaria's immediately flipping turned on him. Great. Not much of Bulgaria, mind. Just this area around Moisia, which is an area I've had some interest in over the years. So, uh, looks like he should be able to win that, to be honest. Anyway, here we go. Here comes the pain train. So, we got ourselves 12,000 troops heading in right now. By the way, if you put on... There we go. We got her a hat. Love it. Now, she is Italian and Catholic. I'll agree, that's a problem. So, we're going to send her a tiny bit of money. We're going to give her an honorary title, like we can call her Augusta. Or not, as it turns out. Fine, whatever. But we'll just, like, declare her whatever one of them is. And now, we're going to demand religious conversion. She'll go for it. So, obviously, she'll still be secretly Catholic. But I'd rather have Orthodox than anything else, to be honest. And enemy commander has been slain. 
good work over there. And yeah, we should absolutely annihilate these people. Who wants to get married, by the way? That is uh, Nicholas II of France. You know what? Sure. Why not? Will you go matrilineal? No, obviously not. But whatever. We'll just send you over there. Have fun. Just, you know, setting up some Greek and Orthodox children if you can. Okay, so we're officially going to smash these guys. There's, there's a siege somewhere. What's going on over? Who are you guys? That's just some raiders. It's fine. And yeah, he accepts the marriage. So we're going to deal with that. Come over here. Storm all of this. No problem whatsoever. You've been taken care of. 58% and rising. We'll just reclaim this territory. Then we'll head down towards Greece to... Ooh. You might be in a bit of a bad place, actually. Because I suspect he's... Then again, you've actually got more troops than him. And you are on hills. So hopefully, you should be fine. Though there is actually another 1,500 right there. Are you going to come and attack this? Possibly you are. Okay, let's speed this up here. It's only flipping, yeah, a uh, two. So just uh, take all of this. Take all of this. Thank you. Take all of that. Lovely. Right, so that's been taken back in a matter of seconds. Uh, that gets him up to 73%. Time for you to head down over here and deal with these two forces. Because once they draw together, they'll probably be able to handle this. Then again... We should be okay, hopefully, with the hills. At the bare minimum, that'll slow him down. Oh, and this is very good. Zeus is actually a zealous Hellenic leader. Love it. Absolutely love it. Oh, as it turns out, that war against Antioch is, yeah, not going well. So well, in fact, she just died of a heart attack. And that's... Oh, no, that was Trebizond. Okay, so this war is going disastrously badly. And you, irritatingly, just died. Which means uh, the new king of Trebizond is this kid, who is Greek, and uh, who's his regent? Okay, the patriarch of Trebizond. Well, on the plus side, how would you like to work for... Oh my. How would you like to... No, 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 no. Why were you willing to work for him? So, is my liege, and... But still, Liege. Okay, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. What's the problem here? Right, send the kid some money just to cheer him up. Give him an honorary title. Give him whatever the hell he wants. Yeah, he can be Caesar. I don't care. And now he will accept being tutored by Princess Nope, the healer, who is Hellenic. Yes, make it happen. We might actually be able to sneak a Hellenic ruler into Trebizond via the back door. Also, yes, unsurprisingly, they have decided to go and attack this group up here. Now, do we actually have... Oh, that group doesn't have the commanders. They've got the advantage of the hill, but I suspect they're going to lose. Well, if they do, reinforcements are on the way. At the bare minimum, there we go. You're willing to do that. Now, 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 now. Now that you're actually uh, right there, we just need to figure out... Okay, just, just keep going anytime. There we go. We got up enough levels. The problem is you're actually not of my dynasty. So that plan didn't work out because she died before she produced any children, the previous queen. That's a shame because I'm guessing you will not be accepting matrilineal. But would you by any chance be willing to accept... Hellenic? Yes. Well, 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 not matrilineal, though. Obviously, no. But you are willing to accept a beautiful, beautiful Hellenic queen. So, let's just make sure the Hellenism is properly set up in that territory. Good. Well done. How am I doing, by the way? 1,500 rising there. Good, good, good. And Queen Phyllis of Anatolia. Honestly, I don't care what she has to say because she is failing a lot over on her side of the empire right now. Though I do rather approve of the fact that, yes, my Hellenic Duke of Thrace has come to me to say, would you believe the Patriarch of Orthodoxy is preaching orthodoxy? We need to do something about this, sir. I'm going to be honest, I was expecting him to do so. That's fine. Okay, so, the current ruler of Epirus is now showing up as an option. So I'm going to put him on the council. I'm guessing he was recently fired. That's why he was causing trouble. We do have some raiders over there. I'll go and deal with them shortly. How's this fight going, by the way? 
Looks like I'm going to lose tragically, even with the hills. In mountains, I would have had a chance. Maybe if I'd had commanders present, would have had a chance. Like, it's going all right on these flanks, but this flank is about to collapse. And then it's going to go badly on the center. Then again, actually, their center... Their center's collapsed. Okay, meaning we might be able to push this flank back. Oh my. We might be able to actually win this, except, hang on, that flank's given. No, we've lost. But it's not bad, and also, the revolt for Ravenna. How on earth is that my business? Ah, because Ragusa decided to take that territory. I'm going to be honest, Ragusa. You can go and take care of that by yourself. I'm not getting involved. So, a really, really sad loss there. We did very, very well. And, more importantly, reinforcements are now on the way. So, we're just going to go and murder all of these guys now. Basically, screw you. Reinforcements arrived, sadly, tragically late. But, morale here is already shattered. So as a result of that, we can just basically mop you up. We're at 72% there. You've actually moved into a position to begin assaulting a Kia straight away. <laughs> so well done there. Who are you guys? That's... Okay, that's some more peasant revolts. There's there's a lot of revolts going on right now. We captured some more people. Arsenios. I swear you used to be important for some reason, but I can't remember why. No, different Arsenios. My Arsenios is Hellenic. Okay, here we go. Sparta has been taken, meaning the remaining territories have basically no fort level. We should be able to just, yeah, push straight through and take all the rest of it. 95% and in one week we can take the remainder. And as soon as that happens, war's over, everything belongs to me. Get in there, beautiful and... Okay, I'm gonna be honest, I'm concerned about heretics too, by which I mean orthodoxy. So, watch your flipping tongue or you will be fired. Right, boom, 100%, job done, you'll be surrendering at this point, into prison you go. Okay, so, 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 this is, this is marvellously good news. Aside from one small problem, which is, um, why can I not, hang on, hang the flip on here, revoke title... Non-aggression pact. Because because you're married to my niece. Okay, break that pact. So that causes minus 10, obviously. I lose prestige and I am a non-aggression pact. Oh, minus 10 for everybody. For how long? Okay, 10 years. It's not the longest period of time. And that's going to force a truce until... Okay. Bloody hell, until 1018. Now, I know that means I can't attack him, but can I still revoke in that period? Because if I can't, this is going to have been one hell of a... Oh, bloody hell. Do it. Yeah. So now everybody hates me. And now... Okay. Now I can revoke everything. Okay, good. I can't go to war for two years. I can revoke the lot. Right, and no one cares. He's a traitor. When I say no one cares, I've got a minus 10 versus everybody. But basically, screw you. Except now it's saying I must have a revoke reason. But I do have a revoke reason. He was a traitor. Like, he's in prison. Right now, we establish this. Oh, is that a one-off thing? Where I can revoke, like, one title per crime or something? Oh, bloody hell. Um... Okay, so I need a special revoke reason, and also if I take any more, well, this is this is not what I was expecting to happen at all. Hang on, I do have a legitimate reason. I can revoke on religious grounds. That's allowed. Okay, so the truce is gonna last two years. Maybe when the truce has worn off, at that point I'll be able to uh, religiously revoke, and then only other Catholics will object. And honestly, if the Catholics all get together and decide they hate me, that kind of works. So then I can just kick all of them out and replace them with Hellenic people. So that's sort of okay, actually. So this guy needs to... Okay, you need to survive for two... Oh. Um, I see how you surviving for two years is going to be uh, a problem. Okay, 
I know this is very unusual because normally I am well known for putting people in the oubliette, but instead we're going to be putting you in house arrest. Okay, so out of the prison, you come. There we go. You're still like, you know, a little bit imprisoned, but not too much. Then again, hang on. If he's going to die, that means... Who are you? You are... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, that's his uncle. Yes, we talked about that earlier, I think. Um, Philippos, we need you to be ready to take over. Because you've actually got... You've got children. Two daughters so far, but... Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, let's talk about this here. Trebizond. We've got that not locked down yet, but we're moving it in the right direction. This kid's been moved over to uh, Heritage Focus. Hopefully, he will flip over to his shooter's Hellenism very, very soon indeed. So, we might have got Trebizond and Sicily locked down straight away. Greece. We can hand the two territories I've just taken straight over to Zeus. He can just have them. That's absolutely fine. Epirus is still exploding. We're working on that one. Bulgaria. We do know that the sadly imprisoned wife of the current king is herself Hellenic. And one of the children is Hellenic too. I believe it's... Yes, this one. The third along. 13 years old right now. And presumably, he will basically gain some really good claims on Bulgaria. We might be able to at some point just find a way to impose him. That would be interesting. Very interesting indeed. Pex, of course, is already locked down. Good work over there. What else do we have, by the way? Pannonia is looking... Okay, you're looking a bit flimsy. You might be dying of something. There's a bunch of madness going on in Bosnia. Don't worry about that for the time being. What's just popped, by the way? Romaine! Romaine has just popped. What are you guys doing? Just a revolt against tyranny, so I'm not sure what they actually want to achieve, but we should keep an eye on that one. Okay, elsewhere. We've got ourselves, yes, Prince Trifon of Anatolia. Ten years old, being educated by a Catholic, unfortunately. Any chance we can step in and take control of this in any way? No, because she hates me too much. So we're not going to be able to do much with Anatolia. But we've still got some good groundwork over here. We're fine for the time being. Yeah, I'd say the best thing we can do right now is hand over this territory straight over to Zeus. You, my good man, can have all of this. But here's where things get important. This guy might be about to die, meaning this guy, we need to very quickly get him on board. So, okay, when I say very quickly get him on board, why can we not evoke sympathy for pagans? What's going on here? I'm not sure. Possibly because he's like the subject of my subject. We're just not allowed to interact with him in that way. But uh, tragically, no. I was hoping we'd be able to evoke some sympathy, get him straight on board with the new secret society. Which right now I believe is uh, just me, right? Yes, it's just me. Then again, that Bulgarian revolt's actually going in favour of uh, Ognan the Wise so far. So, okay. Maybe we'll see if we can do something with you. You're already sympathetic to paganism. That's good. That's pretty good, all things considered. And also, out of patience divine advice. Okay. Hopefully that's some form of, I don't know, maybe he's part of a different secret religion. Divine advice. Maybe that is Catholic. I'm not sure. Ah, but wait, the problem is he's technically already like the equivalent of a king. So I'm guessing this probably won't work, but I'm willing to at least give it a go. So, legendary warrior. He's not brave. He doesn't have a military focus or education. Community. He does have a focus on family right now, which I believe is the right direction for that, actually. He's also kind, which might be relevant. I'm not sure. Alternatively, yeah, ethics and philosophy. He does have that background in terms of education. It is his, well, it's his second highest stat. Or fair and mighty ruler, but honestly, he doesn't have one of those. Yosef is still, you know, getting himself set up here. Hmm community. 
ethics and philosophy. We'll try ethics and philosophy at the bare minimum. He's got a good stat. He does have the right education. We'll see how he goes. I mean, it's not a good education, but let's just see if it happens to her. Like, this is a real dice roll. This is unlikely to work, but I want to at the bare minimum try it. The better option is probably wait for him to... Flipping hell, we just got him. What? Except, no, I didn't. My quest was unsuccessful, but he's... Okay, so he... He practices Hellenic in secret, but he's not part of... Did... Did we get him or not? Hang on. When that happens, then... Okay, so he is Hellenic, and he might come out later, but he's not gonna spread it further. So I need to be the one to spread it further. So, okay, that's what that means. Got it. Hi there. So, you'll be surrendering to the Bulgarian revolt. Like, right now. Please surrender to that revolt. What do you want? Because if it's money, you can have money. 228 gold. I mean, that is cheap. To have a secretly Hellenic king of Bulgaria. Yes, flipping done. So, uh, he's now got himself money, but he's also in prison. So... I mean, I feel like he hasn't made a good decision here, because this guy might just straight up kill him now, so okay, fine, what have you. Okay, so the new guy now wants to be on the council. Understandable, I'm sure we can find a place for you. In fact, yeah, there's an advisor slot right there, in you go. This new king, I happen to have inherited a favour with him, just because I happen to have one already. Oh my goodness. Well, 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 well. Guess what? Your eldest son, who is... Oh, this is... This could not have gone better. So, I'm going to be wanting to assign a guardian to him, and I can force it to happen. Oh, this is... This is wonderful. This is just flipping wonderful. Who wants to do that? Here we go. Helios, you're actually not bad. You're kind, which I think makes you a good teacher. You've got yourself a good selection of things here. So, unfortunately, you are going to be allowing this random guy from my court to educate your heir. That's going to be happening right the flip now. No, no, no. That's going to be happening. Just send him over. Right, now. Nice and quick, we need to actually, yeah, give out some uh, special titles. So, you can have one of those. I mean, we're just sitting on all these titles right now. So, anyone who wants a title can have a title. You can all be patricians. In fact, you know what? I'm going to see if we can make this happen. I'm actually going to back Zeus, the Duke of Pax, as Despot. And I'm going to change my vote over to him. That puts him straight into third place immediately, and why on earth are you guys backing? Who's backing Poseidon? Why? He's... Well, he's okay, I guess. I mean, he's not terrible. Okay, so you're up to plus 43 with me, which is great. Here, have some money, 77, because we've got one more very important thing we need to do here. Apparently, we do need to actually... Uh, yeah, make sure we get permission to do this. So, he can be Bulgarian, that's fine. But, we do need to move him over to... Yeah, there we go. We need him to adopt religion. I'm gonna say religion. We do mean the religion of his tutor. I really hope we mean the religion of his tutor, otherwise this is all gonna be very embarrassing. Yes, boom, focusing on the Hellenic faith because of all that money, he accepts. Okay, so, the Prince of Bulgaria, next in line to the throne, shall be moved over to Hellenic. And, oh my goodness, this is... Well, after Callistos completely fluffed the conversion to Hellenism, I think, actually, this is all suddenly going very well indeed. Okay, admittedly, no one's really jumping on this whole Zeus thing just yet, because my candidate is... Shy, untrustworthy, greedy, and too young. And also an infidel. Okay, I feel like people are not going to be backing Zeus, unfortunately. 
If I could just divide the vote a bit, though, divide up the vote and then maybe hand out a couple of bribes, I might be able to make it happen. Not that I should really, you know, want it to happen. Zeus is... well, he's okay. I mean, that's not terrible, it's just such a shame his education just happened to turn out so badly. And speaking of that, Pex is actually causing trouble right now. Okay, give up 100 prestige to basically make these guys surrender because hang on who just who just won or lost that i think you actually just won that didn't you yes you just won that but you have no way of actually stopping the uh stopping the revolt there are more troops coming in and yeah these troops once they've actually charged up will actually be a lot of manpower okay what we're gonna be doing at this point is how much do i have in terms of virtue not that much to be honest. Then again, I'm getting a fair amount through diplomacy, because unlike my predecessor, I actually have decent diplomacy, which is important for converting people. That's possibly why I got away with this nonsense in Bulgaria. You are going to be making some peace. Thank you. That's what you're going to be doing. And we're just going to start slowly preparing the ground over here. In fact, as that's 300 rather than what I thought, which was 500... And there we go. I would not dream of refusing a reasonable request. Yep, stand the flip down. Thank you. And also, we'll be converting you to Hellenism, by the way. Okay, tiny bit more groundwork here, which is uh, this guy, Gregorus. He is actually the heir to all of Thessalonica. Right now, he's just some guy. So we're going to try and evoke some sympathy for paganism with him. That would do very, very nicely indeed. And... Uh, Duke Focas. You actually like me, but you're paranoid, so you won't be coming around. Okay, I'm assuming that's your, yeah, that's your eldest son. He's not come of age yet, and uh, tragically, yeah, he's a little bit old at this point. You're already trying to make him Catholic. That's a bit of a shame. Okay, ignore that. What's going on over in Thrace? You absolutely despise me, but you're Hellenic, so that's fine. Though hilariously, your eldest son is actually a Catholic priest, so, uh, okay, whatever. And my son Prince Hector's wife, Duchess Constantine, the Unfaithful, yeah, that is a son of my dynasty, but he's not being raised right, damn it. So, uh, what if we can... He's also an Amalfi. Yes, I remember about that now, for whatever reason. And because he's in a republic, favours are ridiculously expensive to buy, so I can't just do that. Okay, fine. So, Crete will just leave it as is. That's not a massive problem, really. Okay, bit of a tricky one, though. He's got no focus. He had the, yeah, the stealthy, sneaky education, which unfortunately means, yeah, none of these are particularly relevant. Loved ones, he's got no children, he's got no friends. Scars, he's got no scars, no genetic defects, anything like that. Profitable business, nothing to indicate that would be a thing. And he doesn't really like me. Okay, we're going to have to make him like me. So, that's 23, which is reasonable. I can't send him any more money. I can't give him an honorary title. I guess I just have to sort of hope plus 23 is good enough, but he's a really weird one to win over. Then again, he is trusting, which I think makes it easier to convert him, but I'm not sure if that's bring him into the society rather than evoke. And okay, we've got him on that front at least. Now we've got him there, we might well be able to bring you in. I mean, for only 50 virtue, I'll give it a go. Because, yeah, this guy is uh, potentially of interest. Admittedly, none of this is particularly relevant to him. That's not relevant. That's not relevant particularly. I guess I could go for community? I mean, he's charitable. I don't think that means anything. He, yeah, just doesn't have the right education. He has no focus at all. I mean, fair and mighty ruler, not really. I guess I'll go for community and a hope. I think I've not got any multipliers there. But he is trusting, which sometimes just makes him easier to convert. But unfortunately, he's just sort of uh, the world's most boring man. So, yeah, converting him is going to be tricky. Also, excuse me, what do you want? And you want me to fabricate? No, not getting involved. Do it yourself. No, despite being trusting, just the lack of relevant options means it's very difficult to get him on board. 
Maybe we'll try again later in his life when he's actually, you know, got something interesting going on. Still, I think I'm pretty happy with this. And then again, I'm not 100% sure I'm happy with this. This one's a bit weird, which is uh, he's gone over to, yeah, Heritage Focus. Because that was the only option I had. And that says Greek Culture and Hellenic Faith. So I'd normally assume that, yes, Heritage would be Culture, but he's already Greek. Versus faith would get him over to uh, Hellenism. But it does specifically say Hellenic faith. So I'm just going to hope that he flips at some point, but I'm not sure. Oh, flip me. That truce with this guy is going to last 10 years. Okay, so until then, I just can't revoke anything. Off you. Okay, and... Oh, now I can evoke sympathy for pagans with this guy. That was not an option previously for some reason. Okay, this one should be an easy one. This guy has got himself children. He doesn't have any friends, but he does have children. And he is kind and gregarious. So I'm pretty sure leaves loved ones behind should work for him. Yep, as I suspected, nice and easy. So the only question then is, can we get him straight in? Because... I suspect we might be able to. And yeah, it's gotta be community again. That's gotta be the right option for someone who's floating around on gregarious and kind and whatnot. Okay, we've got him on board. The question is, will he actually join the society or not? So yeah, it's time for you to join us. So he may join the society or he may just, uh, yeah, preach privately. So uh, come on, get in there. Get in the society. That may be why some people did or didn't jump out of the Hellenic cupboard the last time. Because they were Hellenic, but not part of the society. Also, we've got some uh, uprising going on up here, I think. Yes, massive Jewish uprising in Epirus. Does this really involve me? Should I be getting involved with any of this? And we've got him. We have now got a full member ready to go. You know what? You, my good man. Sorry, I know we put you in um in house arrest. You're actually going in the oubliette because I actually don't care anymore. I'm not flipping waiting 10 years for a non-aggression pact to wear off. All right, Zeus can have this territory down over here. The rest of Greece can just fall to this guy. Also, Bulgaria, what are you doing? Attacking, ooh, the Bulgarian-German excommunication war. Right, because... Technically, you are actually, uh, yeah, Catholic. I mean, we know you're not. You're actually Hellenic, and you've literally authorised your son to be raised as Hellenic. But, okay, fine, sure. You know what? I'd better send some manpower over here to put down this uprising, because Epirus has got enough flipping problems right now. They're just sieging and counter-sieging each other. Right, let's wrap things up today by just making sure we understand what's going on in the rest of the world. Because, yeah, the world is a funny, funny place. There is still this weird Irish nation over here that broke away from the papacy. That just seems to be, yeah, headed by a series of fascinating, fascinating individuals. Love it. Together with, yes, this small breakaway French state headed by... Duchess Argilo the Fat of Aswan. So that's, that's lovely that France has just got this over here. Papacy is now up to, hang on, how's the, uh, the papacy doing right now? Okay, the Pope's dirty for some reason. I'm guessing he's been involved in some fights. Still, he does have a decent number of troops thanks to Egypt, which to his credit, he has held on to all this flipping time. And uh, yeah, Antioch, I assume that war's over now. Yeah, you guys learnt a, uh, a very important lesson about not flipping messing with Antioch. Got it. Spain's turned into a bit of a mess, by the way, which is, yeah, a Catholic Norse Valencia tried to get itself set up, but appears to be sort of uh, exploding for the time being. That's headed up by, right, Germanic paganism. So uh, that is not the fight I was expecting to be happening in southern Spain, but here we are. Romain, meanwhile, has actually gone a Catholic heresy. So they're only sort of Catholic these days, which I believe Italy are still Catholic. And I'm guessing that's part of the reason why uh, you guys started to... Uh, yes, indeed. So that was mainly a war about the fact that uh, Romain went a bit uh, heresy-ish. Gotcha. 
Meanwhile, Germany, I'm guessing you've got yourself excommunicated. Right, so would you believe that at roughly this point in history, there's some trouble between the King of Germany and the Pope? This game sometimes is a little bit too realistic. It gets a bit worrying, actually. So yes, all of a sudden, Germany is just free real estate for anyone who fancies a bit of extra land. France, meanwhile, is slowly putting itself back together. Of course, these days I've sent her Princess Gregoria over in that direction, which is absolutely lovely. So if we're lucky, maybe she'll actually produce a handful of orthodox children just to mess things up here. We do actually have ourselves, uh, yeah, more Norse states showing up here. So just keep that going up. Yeah, we've got a bit of Norse stuff here. Tiny bit of Norse over here. Plenty of Norse all over the place, in fact. Denmark had a bit of a rebellion, but seems to have recovered these days. So Denmark still holds large parts of southern England. We got ourselves a lovely, lovely Irish state here. Irish Catholic, nothing too surprising there. Well, Son of Satan's maybe a bit surprising, but other than that, nothing too surprising. Scotland's tribal, though. That's fun. So Scotland is not feudal at the moment. Scotland has just gone tribal instead. And as for the Abbasid dynasty, sadly, that's actually been going uh, pretty bloody well, which is a little bit on the annoying side, but uh, what can you do, eh? Who are you guys, by the way? I don't think we've really properly looked at you before. So, uh, just some massive shardom. Honestly, not particularly strong. And this is what's going on in this part of the world. Absolutely lovely. Eastern Europe, by the way, let's just not talk about Eastern Europe. Because for those of you of a, you know, sensitive or OCD disposition, this is... This is not fun. Eastern Europe has just sort of got itself involved in a great big game of Twister, and Lord only knows what's going on there. Still, I would say that is enough for now. Next time, we need to figure out what our next big move is here. I would say, yes, Josef has made a strong start. We've done a lot in not much time today. So, yeah, we've actually got ourselves a good little setup to potentially spread Hellenism a bit more aggressively going forward, which is absolutely beautiful. But we need to turn our attention back to the outside world. What should our next target be? Because we could go for Antioch, though they've actually got a very strong defensive pact against me. So that would, yeah, involve war against a lot of different people. I believe Georgia up here is, yes, also part of the Jewish super defense pact. So that's, that could potentially be uh, dangerous. Then there's Europe, of course. No obvious way to get into Italy or Romain yet, but ultimately that is where we need to go. If we want to reform the Roman Empire, we're going to be needing Italy and all of its constituent parts. Though if we could just find a way in, Egypt. Egypt would be great too. I would love to take over Egypt. No, not the papacy. What else do you have, by the way? Someone's got Egypt, right? Do not have a claim on... No, there's very few people with a claim on uh, Egypt. So we can't just move in and take all that, tragically. So yeah, the next move is unclear, ladies and gentlemen, as the seeds of Hellenism begin to grow. Because uh, we could be on something here. We could be on something very, very nice indeed. If I can just be very confident that when we actually decide to uh, declare our intentions this time, that we will be locking down Greece, and we will be locking down Bulgaria, and potentially we will be locking down Trebizond and Sicily, that, to my mind, would be more than enough for me to actually declare. So within the next decade, we might give Hellenism a second go. So all of that coming up very, very soon indeed. But in the meantime... I've been Johnson, has been many a true nerd, and this has been Crusader Kings 2. Thank you very much, and goodbye. No, this no, this no, guy's no. enjoying that. This guy's enjoying his elephant a bit too much. Oh my god. In Fair Verona, we set our scene. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. It is so big. They've managed to glitch inside one of the buildings. Elephants in the rear! And then oh, in come the chariots! Yeah.